we're here in the Omani Desert as part of the Land Regional Hub. We are operating at reach in a harsh environment. We are deployed forward. We are on exercise. However, we are ready to deploy on operations anywhere around the globe from this location. We're really lucky on this exercise because uh, a lot of people have been really interested in it and, um, and, and offered things up, such as the Army Air Corps. So we have a number of Wildcat uh, reconnaissance and attack helicopters uh, in country. We also have uh, Apache attack helicopter. Uh, and really we've been given these because, because we have played quite a big role in designing the exercise. Uh, we have been, been given these to play with and to experiment with, uh, which, is, which is excellent. We're based in Dukham Airport alongside the Apache helicopter and we provide the brigade's speed, reach and lethality on the exercise for the battle group to combine and make it into a battle winning effect. The Wildcat helicopter has a fantastic suite of sights and sensors that enables to push forward in front, of the, in front of the Apache, get eyes on the target, positively identify, hand over targets to the Apache in order to queue on those strike missions. We're a fantastic reconnaissance helicopter. We can be used both in light utility and deep strike missions. We have forward air controllers. We coordinate strike coordination and reconnaissance missions. We can do covert troop inserts, fast roping, abseiling, and all the things you'd reasonably expect a small, agile helicopter to be able to do. So we're currently in Ras Madraka training area, which is in Oman. It's uh, in the, roughly the centre of Oman for, for geographical. Uh, we're working with the Royal Irish Battle Group um, and the Omani Recce Regiment, who are, are hosts, I would, I would probably, probably use. Um, we're trying to trial um, the integration piece between the, the, the two countries. Um, we have view to using this as po possibly a, a regional hub in the future for some of our British training uh, and then further integration with the Omani Recce Regiment. So the Omanis have been great. At, uh, this is their country and it's their land. So. We are very much looking to them for, for the, the desert living guidance. So we, we're fighting at night um, in this operation and we're trying to create as much of the operation um, to be conducted during those night hours. So we're pushing and pushing and pushing to try and get onto the objective early, get HR as early as we can in order to have as much time at night. We have Gen 2 and Gen 3 night vision capabilities in the form of uh, NVGs, Lucy's and Kestrels. Therefore, we own the night at the moment and have that tactical advantage. Within the battle group, there's the battle group recce. Uh, part of our integration in Kanjar Oman is we're working with the Omani Reconnaissance Regiment. So they're, uh, they're there as a squadron, uh, as well as the Scots Dragoon Guards, and as a whole, they're creating a wider cordon, enabling uh, one Royal Irish B Company uh, to become the fighting troops on the ground, uh, destroying enemy positions. Battle Group Rock Drill, the key point from that is that is the end of changing the plan. What happens in the Battle Group Rock Drill, uh, that is finalised. From there, I go off and I 
create my own estimate uh, with, alongside the company commanders and the other platoon commanders. From there, I know where I have to be, uh, where my force has to be and when, and I can conduct my estimate, breaking down my platoon into further fighting elements, and I can then order them and manoeuvre them around the battlefield to best aid the battle group. The Scots DG will push uh, in front of us. Uh, they'll gain as much information on the ground and the uh, situation enemy forces for us. And then we'll go through the orders process, which will disseminate that information to, from the highest level down to the, the lowest ranger. So once we get that information, um, we can start going through our plan. And then that's then when I start getting the rangers prepped, prepping their admin and giving them an idea of what we're doing. And that's then when we flick, flick the switch from administration and sustainability to, to fighting and uh, that's when things start to get really interesting. I roughly have between seven and nine rangers in my section uh, depending on the mission and that their backgrounds go from uh, Fijian to Northern Ireland, Southern Ireland, uh, we've got uh, people from Liverpool, all over England, pretty much anywhere you can think of we have like a, a little bit of everybody in there and that adds a lot of diversity to, to the rangers and it takes a bit of uh, it takes a bit of getting used to all the different accents maybe, but once that's out of the way, everybody just gels really quickly to, to do the job that they're here to do. Okay then, on your body armour then should be able to store four magazines or on your belt kit, and then your spare two magazines boxed up. LLM policy then, make sure at no stage anyone has an ND with white light. To that end, make sure everyone knows left is light, right is night. Make sure you're familiar with that kid. Okay, in terms of ammo stage, two ICs, I need you to be doing your job. You're doing my job, but on a little scale. Anytime you're on low, you need to let me know when you're hitting 75%. Two means, through PLR on channel 16, directly back to me, or the link men. If, that, if I'm not responding to you on channel 16, pass that link man. Every man that was with me at the rear the other day, seeing as soon as we were passing their messages back, the battle was going a little bit smoother. Everyone knew what was going on. If anyone's got the spare rations about, get the snacks in your day sack and have your, have, your, um, have your meal tonight and then get as much snacks inside your day sack as possible. Yeah, because you're obviously not going to be able to start torpedoing for all day breakfast when you're on the flash on the way in. But then, want to flip in your ears back on. On, side, on your missed cards, uh, on your missed data, expect to see your exact number, your age and your pass number already pinned in. With your missed card, there'll be a fucking attached on, will be a yellow silent, crack them away from the body inside the packet. Also, in turn with that, will be an elastic band or some green string enough to go over your head and you can tourniquet. That'll be placed in your bottom right hand pocket. Anyone doing any different to that here, looking at 62? No? Happy days.